And now it's time to play Guess the Tool. Alright, first hint. That tool is from 1957. Okay, I'm leaving it there so I get a good uh, thumbnail. Hey, can you guess what tool I am? 1957. What would that be used for in 1957? Now, at least 10 out of 100 people probably will guess it right. The other 90, I don't know what it is. Looks like something you use for sewing. I think I've seen one of these in one of those movies. Alright, here's a first hint. What's that? I don't understand what that is. Now I'm going to figure out what the other thing is. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, what this is? Can you guess? Wait, it goes on here. Wait, wait. Wait for it. Uh, it's a third hand. You hold it holds the transistor for you. No. I think it's just a clip lead. It's a yeah, it could be a third hand. I don't know. What is it for? Okay, what this is? It's a heat sink. In 1957, transistors were not that good. Okay? Many times, just soldering one of these babies into a circuit board would destroy it. So, what they did was the uh, transistor sat off the circuit board, uh, say an eighth of an inch, and when you soldered it, you'd stick this thing in on the leads, as close as you could to the transistor, like that. And it would keep the, the heat from going up the lead into the case. Now, back in those days, a lot of uh, TV repairmen, they used a Weller handgun. It was a gun. Uh, go look it up. And uh, there were two models. One was 100, 100 watt, and they pulled the trigger back all the way. Uh, 175 for quick heat. Uh, there was a smaller gun by Weller, and it was 30 watts. But it, they were giant tools. And there were a lot of giant tools for the... The TV repairman. Uh, my father and my uncle, it used to be hilarious. Both of them really needed glasses, but neither wanted to break and get a pair of glasses. So they bought this lamp with this giant magnifying glass in the center and had a fluorescent light tube around it. And they would stare for minutes, sometimes hours, at a transistor radio. And then what they do is they start uh, running solder around on all the traces, hoping that it was a broken trace that they would fix. But the real way to fix a trace is you uh, strip back like a line cord and take one of those little strands out of the wire and tin it and put it across each break, okay? You don't run solder across because the next time the person drops the radio or bumps it hard, the crack will appear again and it'll go bad. But just wanna show you, this is a real antique and those jaws are copper. So they would absorb the most heat. And uh, I just being funny with these tools right now showing you these tools because that's other people's videos. They actually make money by showing, guess this tool. And, and so, and there, there are a lot of obscure tools out there. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of them. Uh, what I do is when I see something I've never seen before, I look at it and I say, what could I use this for? Now this, I inherited this. Okay. This was in a packet, a plastic package with this huge <laughs> tweezers and there were doodle sticks that's what my father and my uncle used to call them doodle sticks and they were the the sticks that were uh, pieces of uh a piece of plastic with like a a screwdriver blade mounted at the end of steel and they were for turning the if cans and and things like that and uh when they get a tv in uh, a lot of times they would just start turning stuff and uh, if when i went to tech school i would sit there and kind of chuckle because i had seen guys that took a home study course and then we'd go into something to fix something. I'd also see the guys that went to tech school that weren't learning anything go into something and try to repair. And it's pretty funny. And the whole secret of repair is to do no damage to the patient. Just like the creo, uh, the creed for the being a doctor. You make very educated tries. And you got to be very careful. You don't make the thing worse. The same with people, same with radios. And uh, it's pretty funny. When you watch Shango work, when he gets a radio that someone else has been in, and he figures it out real quick, 
And uh, I, I get a kick out of some of the stuff. But I want to show you, you know, there are some obscure, obscure tools. And there is a, a heat sink that's a lot smaller than this. Okay. Now, this could be a vodka. I can't actually see the name on it. I can't see the name. But a lot of the early transistor tools for working, uh, tools for working on transistor radios at TV repair shop were vodka. And uh, I might be saying it wrong. But anyway, uh, I might even have some vodka tools around. But that was the brand. Uh, Exolite, Vodco. Uh, there was a couple other ones that uh, they were heavily into TV repair shops. And then when TV repair stops started slowing down, those companies got bought out. A lot of them got bought out by um, Cooper Tools, which I think bought out the um, Weller Soldering Iron, a couple other companies. Pretty interesting stuff, but, you know, everything reaches its peak. I just wanted to show you, you know, I can make a video that's brainless. Very simple to do something like this, you know, versus, you know, wiring up a huff and puff board, making two of them, uh, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, yeah, yeah, just just think about how many hours you have to spend on one project, and no one gives a rat's ass, but you could do a guest a tool, and people will watch, more people will watch that video, because they see a tool, they don't know what it is, they think they're a tool person, so then they watch the video, now they know it's a heat sink, and a lot of them are like, well, what's a heat sink do? Well, if you don't remember these old transistors, the old germaniums, and uh, that little tab pointing out there, that's the emitter. And this might be an RCA. But I miss those days. You know, transistor, uh, I'd get a transistor for my birthday. I'm not kidding you. Uh, they give me birthday money, and I go over to Burger Electronics. On, it was on the corner of Bloomfield Avenue. And now I'm going to forget the other now I'm gonna forget the other street. But it was over in Bloomfield. It's not there anymore. And uh, Watts Essing and Bloomfield Avenue. And, uh, and I'd go in and I'd, I'd be all excited. And he had these little uh, transistors hanging on the wall in little little package. You see them on eBay. They're for sale. You can buy a 2N222. There's three twos. And, uh, and later on, it was 2N109 and 107. Those were later on. But the original uh, PNP, Germanium, that I used to buy was for, at Burgers was a, a 2N222. And there's a, a complete website about the 222. And it was one of the first uh, inexpensive transistors sold to the public. Think about, you go in a store and they're actually selling you a transistor in a package by itself. And sometimes they have a little pamphlet on the back that shows you how to make a, um, a crystal radio with it. And uh, yeah, yeah. And then it changed. And after a while, it was just a crappy little package with the transistor in it. And then, um, uh, what, I, gotta, I gotta think of the name of the, the company, uh, International Rectifier, uh, BM2 Cell, I got. It came in a booklet, and, and on the front page of the booklet was a blister, a plastic blister, and the, the uh, photo cell was in there, it was a solar cell. And it was a germanium one, and it, it didn't give a lot of voltage or a lot of current, but it came with all these little experiments you could do. And when, when the light hit the, the solar cell, it made a little bit of voltage. And then they show you in there how to use a transistor and a relay to make it do something. And my dad bought me for that. It was an international rectifier B2M cell, whatever. You, you can look it up. It's pretty interesting stuff how I grew up. I mean, like I said, that would be a birthday gift. A birthday gift. Oh, here, here's, your, here's your birthday gift. A solar cell. Think about that. Yeah, that's my life. All right, that's it.